Christensen, the founder of Seismic Sisters. Today for the interview, we're excited to have our special guest, Lala Wu, Executive Director of Sister District. Sister District has been building progressive political power through grassroots activism ever since the election of 2016. We're excited to have you, Lala. Hi, it's great to be here. I'd like to ask you about your role with the Sister District, learn more about the mission of your organization, and also how did you get started in 2016? My role at Sister District, I'm one of the five women co-founders of the organization. Four of us stayed on to help be part of the organization full time in 2017. And what we do at Sister District is we build enduring progressive power in state legislatures. And we do this because States are critical for every aspect of our lives. If you care about reproductive justice, gender equity, the climate change, education, coronavirus relief, you name it, no matter what you care about, it has to start with states. So we build progressive power in state legislatures and um, we do it in four ways. First, we win elections. Second, we support organizers. Third, we develop legislators, and fourth, we educate and empower. And I'd be really glad to dive into each of these um, in today's show. That's great. And I'm actually curious how you got started. Actually, the seeds, the very beginnings of the group. Was it after election day, you know, when so many women who were active in politics got the shock of their lives, thinking we were going to get the first woman president, and then the bad news hit? Or was it more like after the Women's March in 2017, uh, after Inauguration Day? This got going right after the election. Rita Bosworth is our original founder, and she came up with, she was sitting in a puddle on her living room floor with her twin toddlers running around her, you know, the day after the election. And she didn't know what to do. And she thought to herself, well, what if we can connect these resources where they are with where they need to be? And then the idea of Sister District was born. Soon, our co founders, Gabby Goldstein and I, came into the mix. We were all strangers before, actually. We found each other on Facebook and we became quick friends and collaborators. And we each also pulled in uh, some friends as well. Candace Mitchell, who was a friend of Rita's, and Liz Schwegler, who was a friend of a friend of mine. And we started building this, um, you know, the days and weeks after the election. Hilariously, I still have an email from Rita dated December 1st, 2016, that says, hey, you know, this is not going to be life altering or anything like that. It's just going to be a little volunteer project. So would love for you to, to join. Um, and it was very funny because this has, in fact, been very, very life altering. Um, and, and I couldn't, I, I'm, I've never been happier. I'm so pleased and so privileged. Um, I feel very lucky to have the opportunity to work at an organization like this. And I, you know, was a, was a lawyer before this. Actually, several of the co-founders were attorneys before. So we all left rather stable careers to do this full time. I was shocked to read that um, with Sister District, that four out of five of you actually um, quit your day jobs to vo devote yourself to this full time. And now you've created an actual organization from that initial volunteer work. So this is a career for you now? It's a full-time thing? Yes, that's right. This is my full-time job and we have 16 full-time staff. We are a 527 PAC. That's our primary entity. And we also have an associated D4 organization. And can you tell me a little bit about the impressive numbers that you have on your website? Within just four years of starting Sister District, you have activated uh, 50,000 volunteers doing grassroots political work. You've raised over $3.6 million for progressive candidates all across the country, right? And you've reached out to over 3 million voters remotely. And then also before the pandemic, doing door knocking. Is that right? That's exactly right. And, you know, in addition to those metrics, what we're particularly proud of is the kind of outsized impact that we have on the candidates we support. So, for example, just last year, um, for on average, we raised an average of 10% of our candidates' total cash contributions and made an average of 34% of their total phone calls. And in a year where there wasn't any door knocking or very little door knocking, 
I mean, the, the phone calls were the major part of the uh, field program and the way that our candidates and campaigns could talk to voters. So we're really proud of that kind of outsized impact um, that we're able to have. Well, that's exciting. And it reminds me to ask you about the origin of your name and what's unique about your organization. So with Sister District, uh, you work to support activists that are running progressive candidates in other cities, other states even. You're taking the energy and the resources of Bay Area activists and you're um, essentially applying them strategically uh, to races across the country and even in race red states. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly right. So the name Sister District comes from a Sister Cities concept. And the idea is that we match up volunteers in one city with um, candidates that need the help in swing districts across the country. So for example, here in San Francisco, our home team here last cycle supported two races in Arizona and two races in Texas. That's exciting, especially since people are saying that Texas could be one of the next states to flip blue, which is stunning. That's exactly right. What we saw from Stacey Abrams this year and all of the work that she and her incredible coalition did in Georgia is that we can't write off any states. You know, their conventional wisdom said that Georgia was not winnable, but Stacy Lauren Growargo, her team saw that it was, and they were able to put in the work and it took over a decade to get there, but then um, it was able to deliver the Senate for us as well as to deliver the presidency. And we see this theme over and over again, for example, in Virginia, which Sister District was really proud to be part of the coalition that supported races in 2017, as well as helping to deliver a trifecta in 2019. That was only possible because of the decade plus of work of organizers on the ground. This is often led by people of color, by women of color, by black women. And so what we're doing as one of our new programs heading um, into this next year is starting a program called State Bridges. And this will be taking a page out of that playbook and we'll be directing some of our grassroots fundraising efforts directly to these types of organizations that build power year round. That's so interesting. And it looks like you're focused on infrastructure building, right? You're not just focused on the next upcoming election. You're taking more of a long-term approach? That's exactly right. And this has to be a long-term approach. You know, um, an election only la has, has consequences, but it only has consequences for that term, two years or four years. And we have to keep winning these elections. You know, some people ask, oh, when is this going to be over? When will this be over? And now that Trump is out of office and Biden and Harris are in office, is it over? I mean, it's, it's not over, right? I think that you're exactly right. This infrastructure is incredibly critical and we have to continue to build it. And that's the only way that we're going to be able to succeed. And by the way, the Republicans are not asking, oh, when is this over? When can I quit? You know, um, they are more engaged than ever. I just saw a study the other day that said that make America great again. People, you know, MAGAs are some of the most dedicated um, uh, citizens out there. And so we have to um, also not let down our guard, also not let up on the gas, continue to fight and persevere um, and build this infrastructure that's so necessary for us to be able to build this kind of progressive power that's actually enduring. Have you seen with your volunteers, uh, your team and your friends that once they get politically active and they take their first steps, maybe volunteering with a campaign, that then they kind of develop a new social circle, a new group of friends, and that this can have like long-term potential. Uh, like you said, these friendships can grow from working together on a passion project and it essentially fills an, fills an important social need. So I just feel like, you know, I see that once, you know, you have that satisfying feeling of working with a cool group of uh, people, you kind of want to keep that going. So. I see it as kind of like a friendship model of civic engagement and activism. Do you see that in Sister District? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, that idea of building community is absolutely core to what we do. And we need to be able to connect not just with the work that we're doing, but also connect with each other. And that 
kind of networking and community building is at the heart of our organizing model. And you can see it in the team model that we have, where we have teams, as I mentioned, across the country. Um, you know, and here in San Francisco is a really tight knit group of folks who not only are activists together, but are also friends. And this kind of social connection is something that's been demonstrated time and time again. And we also have some research to prove it, that this is what keeps people coming back. And this is the way that you can make it enduring. And I noticed on your website that you had the Sister District Summit, your annual summit, on Zoom recently. Can you tell me what was different this year about it during the pandemic? And then what are your key action plans for 2021? Are you getting ready for the next election? Yes, absolutely. So this was our fourth annual Sister District Summit, but it was our first virtual summit and it went smashingly well. We were so pleased with the incredible turnout. We had well over 500 people sign up and wonderful attendance throughout the weekend. And the summit is always an opportunity for our volunteer leaders to come together and connect and learn from each other, to reflect on the previous year and to strategize for the year to come. Of course, because it was virtual, we were not able to do all of the things that we're used to doing, you know, like going out for cocktails and having dinner together, but we were able to reach a lot more people. So that has been, you know, a little bit of a silver lining that we were able to, to reach so many more people and bring so many more people into the conversation. And it was really wonderful. You know, I had a chance to tell a little bit about my personal story, which I invite you to check out if you'd like, sisterdistrict.com slash summit, and you can find all of those recordings there, as well as we deep dived into our strategy for 2021 and 2022, including what our electoral map looks like. And we are going to be in a lot of states. It's a lot of familiar battlegrounds like Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Michigan, Minnesota, North Carolina. The list goes on. We are keeping our eye on a wide range of states this year as we prepare for 2022. We know that redistricting is going to have a big impact on the kinds of opportunities that we have available to us next year. And so we are keeping an eye on this closely. And if some of our viewers would be interested in volunteering for Sister District, how would they go about doing that? They can go to sisterdistrict.com slash volunteer and sign up with us. They will get connected with their local team if there is one in their area. And if you're tuning in from San Francisco, there absolutely is, and it's awesome. So please do come join us, check it out. Um, you know, we're still going to be doing virtual events for some time yet, but that means that you don't need to really get dressed. You don't need to sit in traffic. You don't need to find childcare. So there's some benefits and in many ways, um, maybe you can find a little bit more time as well. Um, we would love to have you join us. And Lala, I do want to switch gears a little bit and ask you about some things on your website that I found to be so intriguing. I'm very interested in how you created your mission statement and how you're putting it into action. One of the exciting values statements that you have on your website is that you're committed to diversity and inclusion and racial equity as one of your core values. Can you tell us about how you apply this um, as you go about building your organization, even how you pick your candidates to support and how you work with volunteers? Thank you for that question. And yes, we are extremely committed to building an equitable organization and contributing to achieving racial and other equity um, in the world beyond. Uh, and the way, and, and I'm especially proud to be taking the helm of the organization as the first woman of color to be in this role. Uh, and it's very exciting as we reaffirm our commitment to equity and inclusion. The way that we do that at Sister District is, uh, you know, it's every, it infuses everything that we do. And that includes how we think about 
hiring, which includes how we draft job descriptions, what information we include, what requirements we include, um, how we share those out, how we do research um, outreach to people to make sure that the right people know about this job opportunity. Um, it, you know, is involved in how we think about retention, um, how we support people at the organization and support their wellness and mental health. And of course, it also includes how we think about the substance of what we do. It means that we think very hard about trying to have diverse candidates and do everything that we can to um, make sure that our slate of competitive close races is also representative of the kind of diverse country that we want to see in this world. Um, and it extends to the kind of training that we provide to our volunteers, as well as the guidance we give them for building inclusive partnerships. And the list goes on and on. There's so much. Um, and, you know, it really, the reason we include it as a value is it is something that we think about in everything that we do. Thank you for sharing that. I find that to be so useful for people who are trying to um, contribute to promoting social justice and doing anti-racism work. I think there's been some success in sort of changing the language and the perspective in the way that we think about those things. Um, we're fi figuring out it's not just enough to say, oh, I'm not a racist, I'm not a part of the problem, but really we have to commit to um, action to taking steps to change society and our culture and put it into practice. I'm so excited to see how women and people of color are changing the game itself, the political game, because obviously politics can be very dirty, especially over the last few years, but even long before that, politics has been a very male dominated at the top, you know, the political strategists and even the donors, but I'm seeing that women are getting into the game in many different ways now at different levels, from being candidates to being donors, um, campaign managers and strategists and communications people, uh, also all the way up to running political organizations like you. So you're creating this new type of infrastructure started by women, so I'm assuming it's designed differently from the beginning, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And what we know is that real representation matters and having people with different perspectives in positions of power in who are in the room who are able to make decisions it makes a huge huge difference and it makes uh, all of our work better well thank you so much i appreciate you spending time with us lala Wu, executive director of sister district have a great day thanks so much it's great to chat with you thank you bye